I was talking about this AEW show from Wednesday night, the Thanksgiving edition. Would not expect a huge rating because they never do on the night before Thanksgiving. But it was a very good show. And uh, the opening segment. So they were going to start with the CM Punk match. But uh, as he came down to the ring, MJF interrupted. And of course, last week they did the deal where MJF offered a handshake. CM Punk just walked out. He had two of the best talkers in wrestling not talking. Well, this week they talked for, I don't even know how long. 19 minutes. 19 minutes. Could have done 13. To the point that they had to cut time for matches later on in the show. Could have done 13. It went a long time. But it was very compelling. And they went back and forth. And uh, it'd take forever to recap everything. But there were some, there were some, there were a couple really good singers. Though. There was, uh, there was a line where CM Punk said that he was, he was the Miz, just not famous. A less famous version of the Miz. I thought, my God, if there were ever fighting words, that's them right there. And the crowd gasped. Like, this is almost too much of a low blow. And then Punk... Yeah, I know, because he didn't deserve that one. That was that was, that was was cruel and unusual punishment, that yeah. particular line. Yeah, but, but you know, I mean, MJF threw zingers at him, too. You he know, had some like, line about, uh, about you, you know, Triple I, I congr- H. I, I, I congratulate you. I congratulate you on being straight edge, even though you look like a meth addict. And, um, you know, your, your thing is go to sleep, but I look at your eyes and you never do. And if, if I had your face, I mean, I couldn't be straight edge because I'd need like eight bottles of whiskey to look at, just to even look at myself in the mirror. I mean, he was... Punk called him a needle dick. The fans chanting for that one. Yeah, yeah, that was the, that was the last line. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, they did reference they did reference things from from WWE and a lot. Uh, I know some people hate that stuff, but to me, it's like this company. It doesn't matter. I mean, they have the AAA Tag Team Champions. They've had the NWA Women's Champion. They talk about Okada. They bring in Chaos. I mean, this is not a company where the competition does not exist. And if you want to, if you want to make a some comment about CM Punk based on him walking out because he didn't want to match with Triple H at WrestleMania, I mean, hey, if you're going to build a match, fine with me. Go for it. Yeah, I um. And I was, I thought, you know, like, I, it's like, not, not, there wasn't one line that was said, not that bothered me, but I did think because it was so much WWE that it was almost, you know, the one thing that when you watch AEW that I don't think you should ever do is act, because, because everyone does this, um, is act like you're inferior to them. Uh, um, like, you know, Impact does. It's like, oh, you know, like some mid-card guy from WWE comes in. We're going to make him a big-time superstar. Brian Myers didn't win a match in WWE in 10 years, and now we're going to push him really, really hard. And I think it just makes you look minor league doing that. Um, but, like, you know, there, you know, I, I thought that the mic work from both guys was tremendous. Um, yep. Yeah, um, I mean, MJF, like, went on forever and ever and ever without a break and Punk was just standing there before he finally grabbed the mic. He called him Punky Brewster. He um, said, you took your ball and went home like a little bitch for seven years. And, you know, you you know, basically ripped on him on Punk's promos and said that, you know, he's kissing ass now and every promo is the same. It's a robotic promo. And... Um, you know, you on promos, you were you were a big fish in a small pond, but here you're a small minnow. Um, man, there are a lot of really good promos in AEW, um, but um, he said he was going to verbally finish him quicker than his UFC career, which actually that was a pretty good line, I have to say. Um, and uh, you know, Punk said that. Uh, he thought that MJF stood for my jealous fan because I don't know if you've seen, but um, there is a picture that has gone around when of MJF as a teenager getting an autograph from Punk, being all excited to be in the presence of CM Punk. And he brought up that, I don't know if this is true, but it probably is. He said, you know, there's a poster of me on your wall. And um, that's when he brought up your a less famous version of The Miz. And then fans chatted Miz at him which he probably did not enjoy that much. But, um, but you know, and then 
MJF said that you smell because smell really bad. Your breath smells horrible because you've been kissing so much ass all over the place. And um, talked about his hair going gray. He started calling him PG Punk. Too busy doing comic books nobody reads and movies nobody ever sees. Um, and he said he was scared. Maybe nobody would care about him. Maybe he couldn't hang. And Punk kind of said he was a little bit scared. And he was scared that people might not, like, uh, remember him. And that maybe he couldn't hang. But he said he's not scared anymore. And, um, you know, MJF said that his whole career, he was nothing but second best. Um, you could never beat the you can't see me guy. And you could never beat the king of kings. You could never be above them. And then he said, I was selling out Madison Square Garden while you were making, where you were marking out to Rosie O'Donnell, you know, which is a reference to uh, MJF as like a little, little kid was actually once on the Rosie O'Donnell show and as a singer, because he can actually sing. As, as, and then uh, Punk t talked about how MJF made the New York Times, which was with the Jericho thing, where they, they praised him very heavily for that Jericho skit. I didn't praise Jericho as much, and um, he said that I'm gonna you're gonna be in the New York Times one more time in the obituary segment after I get done with you. And Punk said that um, you know MJF said that you would do all these promos and talk about all these guys that you wanted to wrestle and you would never mention me. And um, Punk said he didn't want to feed his ego, and it it killed him because he said that it killed MJF because when he came back. He want, he asked to wrestle Darby Allen and not the, not MJF first, and um, you know then he said that you're not one of the four pillars. Britt Baker took your spot, and um, the only way the only way you will ever be number one in this company is if you wait long enough for Tony to have a daughter and you marry her. So he got that little uh, zinger out on. It wasn't on Larry Zbyszko. It was on. Obviously, Triple H. So, yeah, they got some good zingers. I mean, it was pretty. Com it was pretty compelling. When it was done, it was like you know you. I think that if if it's just pure talking, you'd probably want to see the match. So, um, and I'm sure the match will be very good. And obviously, we're we're getting the match. You know, I don't know if it's going to be on. It feels early. It feels like they're hitting this really hard this early, and the pay per view is not until March. So I can't imagine hitting it this hard and waiting for March. So then, you know, maybe on one of these, like, uh, maybe it's going to be on that Saturday night special on January 8th in Charlotte. I don't know. I don't know the date. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.